All right guys, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an impression on an implant. In this video, the implant site is number eight. And so you wanna know three things before you move, you move forward with taking the impression. Uh, one, you wanna know if the implant is ready to restore. So it used to be that clinicians would wait six months for the maxilla, for an implant in the maxilla, and three months for an implant in the mandible. So now um, with new surfaces on implants, it is possible to wait a little bit shorter time for the maxilla, maybe four months, um, but that greatly depends on the bone quality and the risk factors of the patient. The other thing that you want to know about the implant is the type. So in this case, this is a Zimmer TSV implant, and you also want to know the, the platform. And in this case, it's a 3.5 platform. So I know that the 3.5 platform uh, corresponds with this little green impression coping and that the 4.5 platform corresponds with this purple impression coping. So if you're using another system, like for example, if you're using the um, Implant Direct interactive line, the 4.3 platform corresponds with the yellow impression coping and the 3.0 platforms are the purple impression copings. So anyway, you pick the right impression coping, which is this one. And the way that I like to seat it on the patient is I grab it with two fingers like this and I gently put it on and I actually start rotating it as I place it. So I want to make sure that it goes on the right way. So I don't apply a lot of pressure. I just rotate it until I hear a click. I don't know if you heard that click like that. See, so that's when I know that it's fully seated. And then I want to grab it with my other hand. So I'll grab with one finger or two fingers if possible. And then while that's securing it, so I know it's in the right rotation, I'll go with my other hand and place my index finger on top of the driver and then use my thumb and my middle finger to screw it on. And you'll know you'll you'll get a feel for if it's seating properly or not when you're when you're tightening it. If you hear squeaking or you feel some resistance or there's some type of binding or something, then that's a clue that it might not be seated properly. Sometimes during this step the tissue around here starts blanching. The tissue gets a little bit wider and the patient might complain of some discomfort. So sometimes it's necessary to apply a little bit of topical before you seat the impression coping. And then, um, and then if the patient's still a little bit sore, you can actually apply some anesthetic. If the impression coping is not seating for some reason, it might be that the tissue is blocking it. So you might have to give a little bit of anesthetic and then uh, gently relieve some of the tissue or use a, a use like a narrow tissue punch. So after you've seated the impression coping, now's a good time to take an x-ray. So in the x-ray you're going to see the um, the interface between the implant platform and the impression coping and you'll be able to see if it's seated properly or not. All right, now that you know that your impression coping is seated properly, you wanna pick a tray size. And this is, I mean, it's exactly the same as picking a tray size for any other type of impression. The important part is that um, you want to see where that impression coping sticks out of. And so you try this on in the patient's mouth, and then you remember what little hole the impression coping is around. So I see that the impression coping is kinda of hiding behind this hole right here. And so I'm just gonna kinda of like put my finger on it and then I'm gonna remove it. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my, um, my acrylic burr and just carve a hole in there. Right, so I'm just taking my acrylic burr and making that hole. Whoop. Now that I've made that hole, I'm gonna try it back on in the patient's mouth, and I'm gonna see if that little hole corresponds well to that implant site. All right, so it's pretty good, but you can see that if I put it on the wrong, if I put it on in the wrong position, so if I put it like right here, it kind of hides that implant access hole, and that's gonna make it hard for me to, to remove the tray once I take the impression. If I slide it this way, it's in the right position, 
But since this is this would be a really easy mistake to make, I'm actually just going to relieve up here a little bit more. All right, that's looking pretty solid. So now even if I slide it around, I'll still be able to find that hole. I still want to try to seat the tray like this though, not like this, just because it makes it a little bit more difficult to, um, to find that access hole if I seat it like this. And I want to make sure it's not rotated either when I seat it. So what I do when I put this in the patient's mouth right now, I'm seeing where this midline lines up in relation to their nose. And so if it's straight on the midline, then I know once I put my impression material in here, I want to make sure that the, that the tray is straight. If I accidentally had the tray rotated, then I want to make sure when I take the impression, I have the tray rotated as well. But in this case, I had it straight on, and so now we're ready to take the impression. So now I clean up my tray, make sure there's no like powder and stuff on here. Uh, it's generally recommended to use tray adhesive at this point. You can still get clin uh, clinically acceptable results even if you don't use tray adhesive. It still works. And so there's a there's two different ways to do it. You can use uh, PVS impression material, and that works fine. But the only thing is that once you put the impression material in here, it starts dripping down this way. And once you put this in the patient's mouth, impression material goes down the back of their throat. And I don't want to have to deal with any of that stuff. So one thing that I've found that works really well for me is I just use putty. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up this putty. And then the, the mess afterwards is going to be a, a lot easier. And actually, it's going to be a lot easier to find and um, uncover the implant access hole afterwards. So I'm just mixing this putty up. All right, so now it's pretty thoroughly mixed. I'm just going to roll it into a ball. And I'm going to apply it on this tray. All right, I, I squish a little bit more here so that way they don't have too much on their palate. But I make sure that there's a lot right here so it's filled up there. I could have even filled it up more because I'm going to be a little deficient back there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and seat the tray. And I push down all the way. And you don't want to wait too long because putty gets kind of stiff. And, um, and it might start to set up on you. You might not be able to push down all the way. All right, so you see how that sticks out there? So I'm gonna take my finger, swipe it, and there, beautifully, is the implant access hole. This one's perfect. And so, using my finger here is convenient, but sometimes it's hard to use your finger. Say it's all the way back here or something you can't reach, or I don't know, whatever, for whatever reason you can't get back there. Um, another thing you can use is a intraoral mirror. So the back of it works really well to help swipe material out. And so you see how putty swipes away easily? Uh, that's not so much the case with PVS. You try to swipe it and then it starts flowing back onto the access hole and that's why I, I really like to use putty. And so now we're just going to let it sit here in the patient's mouth and we're going to let it set up. And you know what? I'm going to pretend that we actually had a piece of PVS stuck in there. Okay? I'm going to say we had a PVS, piece of PVS stuck in there just to make it harder so that way I can show you how to get it out. Alright, we're just going to wait for it to set up. All right, so now the material has set up, and I don't have an explorer on me, so I'm going to use this little root tip pick. So what I normally do is just go with my explorer, stick it in on the side here. On the side, let me see if you can see that a little better. On the side of that access hole, and I just pluck it out. And it comes out so easy. And sometimes you do get a little piece stuck way inside, but it's really easy to pluck out. You just stick your explorer in there, or stick your perio probe and just pop it out. Alright, so now that's all ready to, uh, to be removed and so I'm just gonna put my implant driver in there and again the same technique, I put my index finger on there and I rotate with my thumb and my middle finger and that makes it really quick and easy and what I actually do is that I just I just keep going I just keep unscrewing it un until I hear this. You hear that clicking? That means it's completely um, that screw is completely removed. Well, not removed, but it's disengaged. All right, and now you're just gonna remove it like any other tray. It's kind of tight because this uh, plastic model has a lot of undercuts on it. 
All right. Okay, so that's a beautiful looking impression. Now, one thing I'll tell you that you should do to improve the impression technique. So what I normally do actually is before I seat this putty, before I, I seat the impression tray to take the, or before I seat the tray to take the impression with putty, I actually use PVS. So while the impression coping is seated in the mouth, I'll go ahead and take light body PVS and capture the, um, capture the margins and make sure that I have that PVS uh, fully covering that impression coping before I seat this putty tray. That's going to make sure that your that's going to help make sure that your um, impression coping doesn't come loose, so that it's very well adapted to this putty, and it's going to help you capture better detail. So, for example, if you use the light body PVS before you put the putty, so um, you wouldn't get that little crease right there, or you know, this crease is kind of like two materials being pushed into each other. So there's material here, material here, and they're pushed together. So you'd probably get better margin, uh, margin capture. So anyway, do that before you take the impression. But this is a really good example of a technique to take the impression. If you want to help your lab out, and if you want to be, be a little bit more predictable, I would go ahead and connect an analog. So in this case, I'm using a a dummy implant instead of an analog but anyway the analog is basically is going to represent your implant inside of the model and so it connects to your to your impression coping like that and you want to be really gentle because you don't want to dislodge this impression coping you don't want to wiggle it around you don't want to um, disturb it from from um, its position inside of that putty and so that means when you're turning this screw you don't want to turn it too hard all right, I'm going to show you what happens if you turn it too hard. You start spinning your your impression coping. You start spinning your analog, and now you completely lost the the right rotation of your of your impression. So if, if this happens, then you you might get a, an abutment back that doesn't seat properly. So just remember to be really gentle when you're doing this. And that's why I like to put this on myself. That way my lab doesn't have to touch this or mess with this. All they have to do is pour up this model. All right, guys, so the last step is just putting the healing abutment back on. All right, so if this video was useful for you, I invite you to check out implantninja.com. I got a lot of resources on there. We have a four-step four plan for learning to place implants. We have a step-by-step -step guide for the all-on-4 procedure and uh, some other stuff. So go check it out, implantninja.com.